How's it going everyone? Welcome to the review suite. In this video, we're going to assemble a custom PC and install Linux, specifically Ubuntu 20.04.1 LTS. Building a Linux PC is pretty much the same as building a Windows PC. The only difference, of course, is the operating system. Now, you don't need to build a PC with custom parts to run Linux. If you already have a PC running Windows, you can install Linux alongside it. But if you want a dedicated system for a Linux environment, you have several options. Probably the cheapest way to run Linux is on a Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 model. The Pi 4 has a quad core ARM CPU, gigabit ethernet, and your choice of two, four, or eight gigabytes of RAM. This unit has four gigabytes of RAM and it can run many Linux operating systems. The Pi 4 is great for web browsing, streaming video, and other low power tasks. If you want more processing power, you can go with an Intel or AMD based system. There are a ton of pre-built and used systems on the market, so shop around for the specs that you want. And finally, you can build your own system. Assembling your own PC is always fun because you can choose your own parts. And depending on what parts you choose, you can upgrade to better specs later on. Let me show you what parts we're gonna use for this video. For the CPU, I'm using the Intel i5-9400. This is a six core, six thread CPU. This is plenty for Linux. Now I could go with the stock Intel cooler that comes with the i5, but instead I'm going with the NHL 9i Chromax Black Edition. The Chromax will keep the i5 cool while running whisper quiet. The motherboard is the ASRock Z370M ITX. This motherboard supports eighth and ninth gen Intel chips. It has plenty of USB ports, two gigabit ethernet ports, and built-in Wi-Fi. For RAM, I have two eight gig sticks of T-Force Vulcan. Nothing very special about this RAM, but it does kind of match the motherboard. For storage, I have a crucial P2 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Personally, I am a huge fan of Crucial products. They're not a channel sponsor, but I've never had any issues with RAM or storage. I highly recommend Crucial Memory for your next PC build. Finally, for the case, this is the Inwin Chopin. The Chopin is one of my favorite mini ITX enclosures. I've made a dedicated video about this case, and if you wanna watch it, click the card above. Now that we have the parts out of the way, let's put everything together. All right, everything is put together. The system posts, 
So now we need to prep our USB drive for the operating system. So the first thing we need to do is download the operating system. And we're going to go over to Ubuntu.com. At the top of the page, you should see a drop down next to download. So we're going to click the drop down. And you should see Ubuntu desktop at the top left. And we want to click on 20.04 LTS. And the download will start automatically. While it's downloading, we need to grab a piece of software called Rufus. And the website is right here, rufus.ie. We're going to scroll down and you should see a download box. And we want to download Rufus 3.12. I already have this downloaded, so I'm not going to download it again. So now that we have Rufus and the image downloaded, we can begin to write the image to our USB drive. So I'm going to plug in my USB drive. And as you can see, it's an empty drive. There's nothing on it. It was completely formatted for the purpose of this video. So next we're going to open up Rufus. And as you can see, Rufus has automatically detected my USB drive. So from here under boot selection, we're going to choose free DOS. And then here we're going to click select to choose the Ubuntu image saved on my desktop. So I'm just going to click it. And under format options, we're going to leave everything as is Rufus will rename the drive and format everything and erase all of the data on the drive. Now, again, I've already backed up everything on this drive. So make sure that you do the same with your USB drive. Next, I'm going to click start. And if you get this ISO hybrid image detected, just choose the recommended selection, which is right in iOS image mode. I'm going to click OK. And again, a final warning, all of the data will be removed from this drive. So again, make sure that you have everything backed up if you're using an existing USB drive and click OK. Now that the write is complete, we can remove the USB drive from the computer. So now that our USB drive is ready, I'm going to plug it into our Linux machine and turn it on. And from here, you can see we're at the grub screen. So I'm just going to choose Ubuntu. All right. So now we are at the install screen of Ubuntu. Now, before you install, you do have the option to try Ubuntu. If you like, you can just click it and you will be greeted with the Ubuntu desktop. So if you want, you can take a look at the applications installed, or if you just want to jump into installing it full on, you can click the desktop icon, install Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Installing Ubuntu is pretty straightforward. You just choose the responses based on where you are and your language and that sort of thing. So it's defaulted to English. So I'm going to choose English. And again, the keyboard layout, English US and English US. So I'm going to click continue. I'm going to skip connecting to Wi-Fi at this time. So I'm just going to click continue. The next screen is updates and software. For now, I'm just going to do a minimal install because honestly, I don't like a lot of the applications that are included in the normal installation. And I'm also going to uncheck download updates while installing Ubuntu. Then I'm going to click continue for my installation type. I'm going to erase disk and install Ubuntu. And as you can see, Ubuntu has recognized my SSD. From here, I'm just going to click install now. Then click continue. From here, I'm going to choose my time zone. New York. On this screen, you will input your username and you will give your computer a name. Now you have the option to automatically log in when you power on your device, but I would highly recommend that you require a password for login. Next, click continue. And the installation process will begin. Once the installation is finished, you want to click restart. At this point, you can remove the USB drive and press enter. 
All right. So as far as setup goes, you can connect your online accounts like Google or Microsoft. I typically skip this step and I'm going to set up live patch later. So I'm going to click next. And I usually choose no, don't send system info. And I also leave location services turned off. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. You are all set to start using Ubuntu as your computer. If you've made it this far into the video, I highly recommend that you go over and watch 50 things to do after installing Ubuntu 20.04 by average Linux user. His video is very detailed and it really explains the best way you can optimize your system while also showing you a few tips on how to customize it to your liking. But that's going to do it for this video. Everything that I mentioned in this video, including the parts and the download links will be in the description box. If you found this video helpful or informative, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you are interested in more tutorials like this, as far as installing operating systems or building PC videos, please let me know down in the comment section. Again, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.